fundamental of nurse in chapter 18, planning the new nurses caring for six patients in this shift. After completing their assessments, the nurse asks where to begin in developing care plans for these patients. Which statement is an appropriate suggestion by another nurse? A. Choose all the interventions and perform them in order of time needed for each one. B. Make sure you identify the scientific rationale for each intervention first. C. Decide on goals and outcomes you have chosen for the patients. D. Begin with the highest priority diagnoses, then select appropriate interventions. Answer D. Begin with the highest priority diagnoses, then select appropriate interventions. Work from your plan of care and use patients' priorities to organize the order for delivering interventions and organizing documentation of care. When developing a plan of care, the nurse needs to rank the nursing diagnoses in order of priority, then select appropriate interventions. Choosing all the interventions should take place after ranking of the diagnoses and interventions should be prioritized by patient needs, not just by time. The chosen interventions should be evidence-based with scientific rationales, but the diagnoses need to be prioritized first to prioritize interventions. Goals for a patient should be mutually set, not just chosen by the nurse. A patient's son decides to stay at the bedside while his father is confused. When developing the plan of care for this patient, what should the nurse do? A. Individualize the care plan only according to the patient's needs. B. Request that the son leave at bedtime so the patient can rest. C. Suggest that a female member of the family stay with the patient. D. Involve the son in the plan of care as much as possible. Answer D. Involve the son in the plan of care as much as possible. The family is often a resource to help the patient meet health care goals. Family should be included in the plan of care as much as possible. Meeting some of the family's needs as well as the patient's needs will possibly improve the patient's level of wellness. The son should not be asked to leave if at all possible. In some situations, it may be best that family members not remain in the room but no evidence in the question stem suggests that this is the case in this situation. The suggestion of asking a female member to stay is not a justified action without a legitimate reason. No reason is given in this question stem for such a suggestion. The nurse completes a thorough assessment of a patient and analyzes the data to identify nursing diagnoses. Which step will the nurse take next in the nursing process? A. Assessment B. Diagnosis C. Planning D. Implementation Answer C. Planning After identifying a patient's nursing diagnoses and collaborative problems, a nurse prioritizes the diagnoses, sets patient-centered goals and expected outcomes and chooses nursing interventions appropriate for each diagnosis. This is the third step of the nursing process planning. The assessment phase of the nursing process involves gathering data. The implementation phase involves carrying out appropriate nursing interventions. During the evaluation phase, the nurse assesses the achievement of goals and effectiveness of interventions. A nurse is caring for a patient with a nursing diagnosis of constipation related to slowed gastrointestinal motility secondary to pain medications. Which outcome is most appropriate for the nurse to include in the plan of care? A. Patient will have one soft form bowel movement by end of shift. B. Patient will walk unassisted to bathroom by the end of shift. C. Patient will be offered laxatives or stool softeners this shift. D. Patient will not take any pain medications this shift.
Answer A. Patient will have one soft form bowel movement by end of shift. The identified problem or nursing diagnosis is constipation. Therefore, the outcome should be that the constipation is relieved. To measure constipation relief, the nurse will be observing for the patient to have a bowel movement. During planning, you select goals and expected outcomes for each nursing diagnosis or problem to provide clear direction for the type of interventions needed to care for your patient and to then evaluate the Effectiveness of these interventions, not taking pain medications may or may not relieve the constipation. Although not taking pain medicines might be an intervention, the nurse doesn't want the patient to be in pain to relieve constipation. Other measures, such as administering laxatives or stool softeners, might be appropriate interventions but they are not outcomes. The patient walking unassisted to the bathroom addresses mobility, not constipation. The patient may need to walk to the bathroom to have a bowel movement. But the appropriate outcome for constipation is that the constipation is relieved as evidenced by a bowel movement, something that the nurse can observe. The nurse performs an intervention for a collaborative problem. Which type of intervention did the nurse perform? A. Dependent B. Independent C, interdependent D, physician initiated. Answer C, interdependent collaborative interventions or interdependent interventions are therapies that require the combined knowledge, skill, and expertise of multiple healthcare professionals. Healthcare provider initiated HCP interventions or dependent nursing interventions or actions that require an order from the HCP. Nurse-initiated interventions are the independent nursing interventions or actions that a nurse initiates without supervision or direction from others. A registered nurse administers pain medication to a patient suffering from fractured ribs. Which type of nursing intervention is this nurse implementing? A. Collaborative B. Independent C. Interdependent D. Dependent. Answer D. Dependent. The nurse does not have prescriptive authority to order pain medications unless the nurse is an advanced practice nurse. The intervention is therefore dependent. Administering a medication, implementing an invasive procedure e.g. inserting a Foley catheter, starting an intravenous IV infusion, and preparing a patient for diagnostic tests are examples of healthcare provider-initiated interventions. A collaborative or an interdependent intervention involves therapies that require combined knowledge, skill, and expertise from multiple healthcare professionals. Nurse-initiated interventions are the independent nursing interventions or actions that a nurse initiates without supervision or direction from others. Once a nurse assesses a client's condition and identifies appropriate nursing diagnoses, A, a plan is developed for nursing care. B, physical assessment begins. C, list of priorities is determined. D. Review of the assessment is conducted with other team members. Answer. A plan is developed for nursing care. After assessment and diagnosis is planning. Planning is a category of nursing behaviors in which A. The nurse determines the health care needed for the client. B. The physician determines the plan of care for the client. C. Client-centered goals and expected outcomes are established. D. The client determines the care needed. Answer C. Client-centered goals and expected outcomes are established. A client-centered goal is a specific and measurable behavior or response that reflects a client's a. 
desired for specific healthcare interventions. B. Highest possible level of wellness and independence in function. C. Physician's goal for the specific client. D. Response when compared to another client with a like problem. Answer B. Highest possible level of wellness and independence in function. For clients to participate in goal setting, they should be A. Alert and have some degree of independence. B. Ambulatory and mobile. C. Able to speak and write. D. Able to read and write. Answer A. Alert and have some degree of independence. The nurse writes an expected outcome statement in measurable terms. An example is client will have less pain. Client will be pain free. Client will report pain acuity less than 4 on a scale of 0 to 10. Client will take pain medication every 4 hours around the clock. Answer client will report pain acuity less than 4 on a scale of 0 to 10. When establishing realistic goals, the nurse bases the goals on the nurse's personal knowledge, knows the resources of the health care facility, family, and the client, must have a client who is physically and emotionally stable must have the client's cooperation. Answer B, knows the resources of the health care facility, family, and the client. When developing a nursing care plan for a client with a fractured right tibia, the nurse includes in the plan of care independent nursing interventions, including A, Apply a cold pack to the tibia. B. Elevate the leg 5 inches above the heart. C. Perform range of motion to right leg every 4 hours. D. Administer aspirin 325 milligrams every 4 hours as needed. Answer. B. Elevate the leg 5 inches above the heart. B. Does not require a physician order. O and D require an order. C is not appropriate for a fractured tibia. Collaborative interventions are therapies that require A. Physician and nurse interventions B. Nurse and client intervention C. Client and physical intervention D. Multiple healthcare professionals. Answer D, multiple healthcare professionals. A nurse is developing a care plan for a patient with a pelvic fracture on bed rest. Which goal statement is realistic for the nurse to assign to this patient? A, patient will increase activity level this shift. B, patient will turn side to back to side with assistance every two hours. C, Patient will use the walker correctly to ambulate to the bathroom as needed. D. Patient will use a sliding board correctly to transfer to the bedside commode as needed. Answer. A patient will increase activity level this shift. A goal is a broad statement of desire. Change the patient will increase activity level is a broad statement. Turning is the expected outcome. When determining goals, the nurse needs to ensure that the goal is individualized and realistic for the patient. Since the patient is on bed rest, using a walker and bedside commode is contraindicated. Which information indicates a nurse has a good understanding of a goal? A. It is a statement describing the patient's accomplishments without a time restriction. B. It is a realistic statement predicting any negative responses to treatments. 
see it is a broad statement describing a desired change in a patient's behavior. D. It is a measurable change in a patient's physical state. Answer. C. It is a broad statement describing a desired change in a patient's behavior. A goal is a broad statement that describes a desired change in a patient's condition or behavior. A goal is mutually set with the patient. An expected outcome is the measurable changes patient behavior, physical state, or perception that must be achieved to reach a goal. Expected outcomes are time-limited, measurable ways of determining if a goal is met. Well-formulated, client-centered goals should a. meet immediate client needs, b. include preventative health care, c. include rehabilitation needs, d. all the above. Answer d. all the above. A patient's plan of care includes the goal of increasing mobility this shift. As the patient is ambulating to the bathroom at the beginning of the shift, the patient suffers a fall. Which initial action will the nurse take next to revise the plan of care? A. Consult physical therapy. B. Establish a new plan of care. C. Set new priorities for the patient. D. Assess the patient. Answer D. Assess the patient. Nurses revise a plan when a patient's status changes. Assessment is the first step. Know also that a plan of care is dynamic and changes as the patient's needs change. Asking physical therapy to assist the patient is premature before assessing the patient and awaiting the health care provider's orders. The nurse may not need to disregard all previous diagnoses. Some diagnoses may still apply, but the patient needs to be assessed first. Setting new priorities is not recommended before assessment and establishing diagnoses. After determining a nursing diagnosis of acute pain, the nurse develops the following appropriate client-centered goal A. Encourage client to implement guided imagery when pain begins. B. Determine effective pain intensity on client function. C. Administer analgesic 30 minutes before physical therapy treatment. D. Pain intensity reported as a 3 or less during hospital stay. Answer. D. Pain intensity reported as a 3 or less during hospital stay. Measurable and objective. The following statements are on a patient's nursing care plan. Which statement will the nurse use as an outcome for a goal of care? A. The patient will verbalize a decreased pain level less than 3 on a 0 to 10 scale by the end of this shift. B. The patient will demonstrate increased tolerance to activity over the next month. C. The patient will understand needed dietary changes by discharge. D. The patient will demonstrate increased mobility in two days. Answer A. The patient will verbalize a decreased pain level less than 3 on a 0 to 10 scale by the end of this shift. An expected outcome is a specific and measurable change that is expected as a result of nursing care. Verbalizing decreased pain on a 0 to 10 scale is an outcome. The other three options in this question are goals. Demonstrating increased mobility in two days and understanding necessary dietary changes by discharge or short-term goals because they are expected to occur in less than a week. Demonstrating increased tolerance to activity over a month-long period is a long-term goal because it is expected to occur over a longer period of time. A charge nurse is reviewing outcome statements using the SMART approach. Which patient outcome statement will the charge nurse praise to the new nurse? 
A. The patient will ambulate in hallways. B. The nurse will monitor the patient's heart rhythm continuously this shift. C. The patient will feed self at all mealtimes today without reports of shortness of breath. D. The nurse will administer pain medication every four hours to keep the patient free from discomfort. Answer. See the patient will feed self at all mealtimes today without reports of shortness of breath. An expected outcome should be patient-centered, should address one patient response. Should be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timed, smart approach. The statement, the patient will feed self at all mealtimes today without reports of shortness of breath includes all smart criteria for goal writing. The patient will ambulate in hallways is missing a time limit. Administering pain medication and monitoring the patient's heart rhythm or nursing interventions. They do not reflect patient behaviors or actions. Which of the following nursing interventions are written correctly? A. Apply continuous passive motion machine during day. B. Perform neurovascular checks. C. Elevate head of bed 30 degrees before meals. D. Change dressing once a shift. Answer C. Elevate head of bed 30 degrees before meals. Specific and timed. The following statement appears on the nursing care plan for an immunosuppressed client. The client will remain free from infection throughout hospitalization. This statement is an example of a gun. A. Nursing diagnosis B. Short-term goal C. Long-term goal D. Expected outcome. Answer. Be sure term goal and objective behavior or response that you expect a patient to achieve in a short time, usually less than one week. The following statements appear on a nursing care plan for a client after a mastectomy, incision site approximated, absence of drainage or prolonged erythema at incision site, and client remains afebrile. These statements are examples of A. Nursing interventions B. Short-term goals C. Long-term goals D. Expected outcomes Answer D. Expected outcomes The measurable change in a patient's condition that you expect to occur in response to the nursing care. The planning step of the nursing process includes which of the following activities? A. Assessing and diagnosing B. Evaluating goal achievement C. Performing nursing actions and documenting them. D. Setting goals and selecting interventions. Answer G. Setting goals and selecting interventions. The nurse sets patient-centered goals and expected outcomes and plans nursing interventions. The nursing care plan is A. A written guideline for implementation and evaluation. B. A documentation of client care. C. A projection of potential alternations in client behaviors. D a tool to set goals and project outcomes. Answer A, a written guideline for implementation and evaluation. A client's wound is not healing and appears to be worsening with the current treatment. The nurse first considers A, notifying the physician, B, Calling the wound care nurse. C. Changing the wound care treatment. D. Consulting with another nurse. Answer. B. Calling the wound care nurse. Calling in the wound care nurse as a consultant is appropriate because he or she is a specialist in the area of wound management. 
professional and competent nurses recognize limitations and seek appropriate consultation. A. This might be appropriate after deciding on a plan of action with a wound nurse specialist. The nurse may need to obtain orders for special wound care products. C. Unless the nurse is knowledgeable in wound management, this could delay wound healing. Also, the current wound management plan could have been ordered by the physician. D. Another nurse most likely will not be knowledgeable about wounds and the primary nurse would know the history of the wound management plan. When calling the nurse consultant about a difficult client-centered problem, the primary nurse is sure to report the following a. Length of time the current treatment has been in place. b. The spouse's reaction to the client's dressing change. c. Client's concern about the current treatment. D. Physician reluctance to change the current treatment plan. Answer A. Length of time the current treatment has been in place. It gives the consulting nurse facts that will influence a new plan. B. C. And D. Are all subjective and emotional issues conclusions about the current treatment plan and may cause a bias in the decision of a new treatment plan by the nurse consultant. The primary nurse asked a clinical nurse specialist CNS to consult on a difficult nursing problem. The primary nurse is obligated to A. Implement the specialist recommendations. B. Report the recommendations to the primary physician. C. Clarify the suggestions with the client and family members. D. Discuss and review advice strategies with CNS. Answer D. Discuss and review advice strategies with CNS. It is important that they communicate and discuss recommendations. The primary nurse can then accept or reject the CNS recommendations. A. Some of the recommendations may not be appropriate for this client. The primary nurse would know this information. A consultation requires review of the recommendations, but not immediate implementation. This would be appropriate after first talking with the CNS about recommended changes in the plan of care and the rationale. Then the primary nurse should call the physician. C. The client and family do not have the knowledge to determine whether new strategies are appropriate or not. Better to wait until the new plan of care is agreed upon by the primary nurse and physician before talking with the client and or family. After assessing the client, the nurse formulates the following diagnoses. Place them in order of priority, with the most important classified as high to low listed first. A. Constipation B. Anticipated breathing C. Ineffective airway clearance D. Ineffective tissue perfusion Answer C, D, A, B, C, ineffective airway clearance, D, ineffective tissue perfusion, A, constipation, B, anticipated breathing. The RN has received her client assignment for the day shift. After making the initial rounds and assessing the clients, which client would the RN need to develop a care plan first? A. A client who is ambulatory. B. A client who has a fever, is diaphoretic and restless. C. A client scheduled for OT at 1 p.m. D. A client who just had an appendectomy and has just received pain medication. Answer B. A client who has a fever, is diaphoretic and restless. Signs for shock. A patient is suffering from shortness of breath. The correct goal statement would be written as A. The patient will be comfortable by the morning B. The patient will breathe on labored at 14 to 18 breaths per minute by the end of the shift C. 
The patient will not complain of breathing problems within the next eight hours. D. The patient will have a respirator rate of 14 to 18 breaths per minute. Answer. B. The patient will breathe on labored at 14 to 18 breaths per minute by the end of the shift. It addressed all component of a goal, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timed. When caring for a patient who has multiple health problems and related medical diagnoses, nurses can best perform nursing diagnoses and nursing interventions by developing a critical pathway B, nursing care plan C, concept map D, diagnostic label. Answer C concept maps helps the nurse organize nursing interventions for patient with multiple problems. Consultation occurs most often during which phase of the nursing process? A. Assessment B. Diagnosis C. Planning D. Evaluation. Answer. C. Planning when a nurse is unsure of how to proceed in the planning process. He, she will seek out another colleague's knowledge and experience to assist in planning interventions for the patient. A nurse is preparing to make a consult. In which order, beginning with the first step, will the nurse take? 1. Identify the problem. 2. Discuss the findings and recommendation. 3. Provide the consultant with relevant information about the problem. 4. Contact the right professional with the appropriate knowledge and expertise. 5. Avoid bias by not providing a lot of information based on opinion to the consultant. Answer A. 1, 4, 3, 5. The first step in making a consultation is to assess the situation and identify the general problem area. Second, direct the consultation to the right professional such as another nurse or social worker. Third, provide a consultant with relevant information about the problem area and seek a solution. Fourth, do not prejudice or influence consultants. Fifth, be available to discuss a consultant's findings and recommendations. A hospital's wound nurse consultant made a recommendation for nurses on the unit about how to care for the patient's dressing changes. Which action should the nurses take next? A. Include dressing change instructions and frequency in the care plan. B. Assume that the wound nurse will perform all dressing changes. C. Request that the health care provider look at the wound. D. Encourage the patient to perform the dressing changes. Answer A. Include dressing change instructions and frequency in the care plan. Incorporate the consultant's recommendations into the care plan. The wound nurse clearly recommends that nurses on the unit, not the patient, should continue dressing changes. The nurses should not make a wrong assumption that the wound nurse is doing all the dressing changes. The recommendation states for the nurses to do the dressing changes. If the nurses feel strongly about obtaining another opinion, then the healthcare provider should be contacted. No evidence in the question suggests that the patient needs a second opinion. Which action will the nurse take after the plan of care for a patient is developed? A. Place the original copy in the chart so it cannot be tampered with or revised. B. Communicate the plan to all healthcare professionals involved in the patient's care. 
C filed the plan of care in the administration office for legal examination. D send the plan of care to quality assurance for review. Answer B. Communicate the plan to all healthcare professionals involved in the patient's care. Setting realistic goals and outcomes often means you must communicate these goals and outcomes to caregivers in other settings who will assume responsibility for patient care. The plan of care communicates nursing care priorities to nurses and other healthcare professionals. Know also that a plan of care is dynamic and changes as the patient's needs change. All healthcare professionals involved in the patient's care need to be informed of the plan of care. The plan of care is not sent to the administrative office or quality assurance office. A nurse is planning care for a patient with a nursing diagnosis of impaired skin integrity. The patient needs many nursing interventions, including a dressing change, several intravenous antibiotics, and a walk. Which factors does the nurse consider when prioritizing interventions? Select all that apply. A. Rank all the patient's nursing diagnoses in order of priority. B. Do not change priorities once they've been established. C. Set priorities based solely on physiological factors. D. Consider time as an influencing factor. E. Utilize critical thinking. Answer A, D, and E, A. Rank all the patient's nursing diagnoses in order of priority. D. Consider time as an influencing factor. E. Utilize critical thinking. By ranking a patient's nursing diagnoses in order of importance and always monitoring changing signs and symptoms defining characteristics of patient problems. You attend each patient's most important needs and better organize ongoing care activities. Prioritizing the problems or nursing diagnoses will help the nurse decide which problem to address first. Symptom pattern recognition from your assessment database and certain knowledge triggers help you understand which diagnoses require intervention and the associated time frame to intervene. Effectively, planning requires critical thinking applied through deliberate decision making and problem solving. The nurse avoids setting priorities based solely on physiological factors. Other factors should be considered as well. The order of priorities changes as the patient's condition and needs change, sometimes within a matter of minutes. A nurse is teaching the staff about the benefits of nursing outcomes classification. Which information should the nurse include in the teaching session? Select all that apply. A. Includes seven domains for level 1B. Uses an easy three-point Likert scale. C. Adds objectivity to judging a patient's progress. D. Allows choice in which interventions to choose. E. Measures nursing care on a national and international level. Answer, C and E, C, adds objectivity to judging a patient's progress, E, measures nursing care on a national and international level, answer, C, nursing outcomes classification, NOC, links outcomes to NANDA international nursing diagnoses. Such rating system adds objectivity to judging a patient's progress. Using standardized nursing terminologies such as NOC makes it more possible to measure aspects of nursing care on a national and international level. The indicators for each NOC outcome allow measurement of the outcomes at any point on a 5-point Likert scale from most negative to most positive. This resource is an option you can use in selecting goals and outcomes, not interventions, for your patients. The nursing interventions classification model includes three levels, domains, classes, and interventions for ease of use. 
the seven domains are the highest level, level one, of the model using broad terms, e.g. safety and basic physiological to organize the more specific classes and interventions.